Hi everyone, welcome to my first video. This time we will create this flat and modern user interface, with side menu, drop down sub menus, the option to open a single form in a panel. And how to make a user interface responsive, or adaptable to any size, for example, the logo always remains in the center of the panel despite resizing the form. Similarly with user controls, such as data grid view, text boxes, buttons, labels, among others. Well, to achieve a responsive user interface, or adaptable to any size, we simply need to set the anchor and dock property, depending on the objective you want to achieve. Also the use of these properties, is the trick to achieve deployable and adaptable submenus. While it is true that Windows Form is very limited to these things, but quiet, everything is possible, and today I will teach you the easiest and fastest way, with a few lines of code, applying logic, and imagination. Well let's start with the tutorial. We open Visual Studio, in my case the 2015 version, you can do it in any version of Visual Studio, either 2008, 2019 or other. We create a new Windows Form application project. We put a name, for example, Media Player. First I will change the font size. We establish a considerable size of the form. Well, we create the side menu, for this we add a panel. We set a background color, in my case a RGB color. Now, in the dock property, we set to the left, that is, we attach to the left. We set a width of 250 pixels. We change the name to Side Menu Panel. We add a panel inside the Side Menu, to add some logo or data. In the Dock property, we change to Top, to attach to the top. We add a button. Similarly, we change the Dock property to Top, to attach to the top. We set the height of the button at 45 pixels. This button will be used to open the playback media, and will have a drop down sub menu. To do this, we add a panel. We change the background color. In the same way, on the dock property, we establish top to attach to the top. We add a button in the submenu panel. We set a height of 40 pixels, and attach to the top through the dock property. We add more 3 buttons or the necessary buttons. We adjust the height of the submenu panel. We change the name of the button to media button. We also change the name of the submenu panel to media submenu panel. Finally, we customize the buttons. We change the style to flat. In appearance, we remove the edge. We change the color of the font. We do the same for the submenu buttons. You can change the colors when the mouse passes over the button and clicks on the button. Select all the buttons, and align the text to the left. In the media button, we add a 10 pixel padding to the left. Similarly for the submenu buttons, we add a 35 pixel padding to the left. I will add some buttons and submenus. To avoid problems, the order in which the controls are created is very important.
I will change the labels of the main buttons, this will be the button to manage the playlist. This one, to open the equalizer. We change the name of this panel to Playlist Submenu Panel. We do the same for the other buttons and submenu panels. Once finished placing the respective names and labels of the buttons and sub-menu panels. Select the main panel from the side menu, and change the automatic scrolling property to true. In this way you can navigate in all the menu components in case the form is small. I will resize the form to 950 wide and 600 high. I will also set the minimum form size, you can add values that you find convenient, however it is optional to do so. Well, now we will code the form. To do this, right click, view code. We create a method with no name return, customize design. In this method we simply hide the sub-menu panels. To do this, we set the visible property to false, for both the media submenu panel, playlist submenu panel, and tools submenu panel. You can do this directly from the panel properties, I do it this way so that it can be understandable and clear. Here you can have other ways to customize the design. Finally, we invoke the method in the constructor, it must be after the method of initializing components. We create another empty type method to hide the submenu. In this method, we will hide the submenu panel that has been previously shown. We add a condition. If the media submenu panel is visible, we hide it by setting the visible property to false. In the same way for the playlist submenu panel and tools submenu panel. We create another empty type method to display the submenu. Well, all submenus are panels, therefore, as a parameter, we indicate that it is of type panel of submenu name. We create a condition. If submenu panel is hidden, we show the submenu. But first we must invoke the method of hiding submenu, to hide if there is any open submenu. Then, we show the submenu. Otherwise, that is, if the submenu is visible, or open, we hide the submenu again. This will change the visibility of the current submenu, or the submenu shown above. Finally, we invoke these methods from the respective buttons. We turn to the design, and create the click event of the media button. Here we invoke the method of show submenu. As a parameter, we send the media submenu panel. We create the click event of each button of the submenu. Here you will obviously have some lines of code, for example, to show a form, open a web link, or open the Windows File Explorer. Under the codes, we invoke the method of hiding submenu. Obviously after selecting some item from the submenu, we must hide the submenu. We do the same on all the submenu buttons. Let's test the application.
works correctly. We do the same with the missing submenus and buttons. We create the click event of the manage playlist button. Here we invoke the method of show submenu. As a parameter, we send the submenu playlist panel. We create the click event of each submenu button and invoke the method of hiding submenu. We create the click event of the equalizer button. This button has no submenu. Therefore, like the submenus buttons, we invoke the method of hiding submenu to close if there is any submenu open. We create the click event of the tools button. We invoke the method show submenu and as a parameter, we send the submenu panel tools. We create the click event of each submenu button and invoke the method of hiding submenu. Similarly for the help button. Well, let's try the application. You watch your dreams unfold. Let it come around and let it breathe over me. Works correctly. I will create regions for each sub menu. That way have the codes organized. This is optional. Now we create the functionality of opening child forms. We turn to design. For this case, I will add a playback panel to add the playback bar, volume, pause, etc. In your case you can skip this step. Well, we added a panel to contain the child forms. I will change the background color. We set the dock property to fill, to fill in all the missing space. I placed both panels of the same background color, so I will change to a different color. We change the name, for example container panel, or child form panel. This other, to playback panel. We go to the code and create a method to open the child forms in the container panel. As I said in the introduction of the video, we will open a single form inside the container panel. If you want to open several forms within the panel, you can watch this video, or you can modify this method according to your needs. Well, to open a single form, it is necessary to close the previous form. To do this it is necessary to store the form that opens, therefore we declare a private variable of type form of active form name, as a value we set null. We create a condition, if active form is different from null. We close the active form. That is, if there is an open form, we close it. Now, we save the form that opens in the active form variable. To do this, we create a form type parameter of the child form name. Then, active form will be equal to the child form parameter. This way we store the active form, and close the form when opening another form. Well, now we indicate that the child form is not of a top level. That is, it will behave like a control. We remove the border of the form. We set the dock property to fill, to fill the entire container panel. Now. We add the form to the list of controls in the container panel.
we associate the form with the container panel. In case you put a logo on the panel, then we need to bring the form to the front. Finally we show the child form. Alright, to use the method, I will add some forms, and insert a logo in the center of the form container panel. To have a responsive user interface, or adaptable to any size, we only need to set the anchor or dock property, as necessary. In this case, I want the logo to always be in the center of the panel. To do this, we go to the anchor property, and deactivate all anchors. We add a form. I recommend you create the form with the same size of the container panel without counting the edges of the form. In this way we prevent the form from flickering when opening it in the panel. I will add another form, and we set the same size as the previous form. We add a data grid view. In the anchor property, we activate all anchors, so that it adapts to the top, left, right and bottom, that is, responsive to all sides. I will add buttons. In the anchor property, we set to the bottom and right. And this other button, we set to the top and left. In this way you can control the adaptability of the controls, which many know as responsive, although it would not be the concrete definition. We create the function of closing the form. We do the same on the other form. Now let's open the forms from the main menu form. We open the click event of some button, for example, the first button of the media submenu. We invoke the method of opening child form in the container panel. Now I will open the other form from the equalizer button. And that's it. Let's test the application. The forms open and close correctly. In the same way, the controls adapt correctly when resizing the form. That is, our application is responsive as you want. Similarly, the logo remains centered despite resizing or maximizing. Alright, I will add the icons and labels each button and panels. I have already customized the user interface of this media player. Maybe in a future tutorial. Add functionality to play and manage music and videos. You can create the custom title bar using a panel. In this case, I changed the colors of the title bar from the Windows 10 customization. Alright that's all in this tutorial. I hope you liked it and until next time.